What's up guys, this is DDP. Uh, as you can see, I am not in my normal studio setup here. Studio, right? But uh, I am currently out of town. That said, of course, big Cowboys news comes down. Gotta talk on it. I was kind of hoping that Law or James or someone was going to go live so I could just kind of do a call-in thing. But it doesn't look like that's the case. So this won't be a live stream just because I'm not sure how good my upload speed is here. So I'm recording this and I'm going to upload it. That said, I'm not going to have any editing or anything like that, but as you can see below, wiggle, wiggle, the news of the day, the breaking news, the Cowboys have pretty much shocked everybody, even in the Dallas media, by deciding to cut kicker Dan Bailey. Now, Bailey has led the Cowboys in scoring the last seven years. He's the only Dallas kicker to ever make it to a Pro Bowl. I think that was 2015 he did that. He is the second most accurate kicker in NFL history for a time held the record. In fact, it was only because of the end of last season that he lost it. He suffered a pretty bad groin strain at the 49ers, and he missed a couple weeks. We had a temp kicker in, and when he came back, he just wasn't quite himself. I think he missed something like five total field goals the rest of the way, including his only two missed extra points ever. So this is this is a crazy development, I think, but at the same time, everyone's freaking out. And I, I get it. I was surprised by it as well. But I look at it and I say, well, he hasn't looked quite himself even in camp. And kickers, they're fickle things, man. It doesn't matter how good they are. If they get shook, if they start losing confidence, they're shot. They're about done. And Dan Bailey seems like he's finally hit that mark. I, I commented in the offseason when there were, an, or not the offseason, early in camp, when there were reports that he was kind of struggling a little bit, where he was missing three out of five field goals and practices and stuff. I was saying, you know, he's a dude who said that at no level has he ever struggled before. Not high school, not college, not pro. He's never struggled. He's never had to overcome this mentally, and it could be a block for him. And it appears that it has been. So... It's a shocking development, but the thing of the matter is he, he had very visible issues by the end of last season. Even if the Cowboys had made the playoffs, he would have been a uh, – what, what's the word I'm looking for here? He would have been a liability in the playoffs, I think, and he hasn't come out of it despite the long off season, and hasn't looked good in camp. At least not Dan Bailey good. I know that's a very high bar, but they basically made the decision that, you know what? We might have this other kicker who has never made a regular season NFL field goal kick and has floated around in the CFL for years, but at least we know he's got a big leg and we're not having to pay him anything. They're paying him $480,000 compared to Dan Bailey's $3.4 million he was going to cost against the cap this year. So it's a surprising thing. I know people are pointing out like, wow, you kept a fourth tight end in Rico who literally got busted for pot last night when you were making these final decisions. He was literally in jail this morning still. I, I get it. It's weird. But at the same time, I, I think that they they feel like they know something. Dan Bailey is the highest paid kicker in the league, or was, and something seems off. So it's a surprising and disheartening thing. That means in one offseason, your all-time leader in receptions, Jason Witten, your all-time leader in touchdown receptions, Des Bryant, and your all-time leader in field goal percentage and field goals made, Dan Bailey, all gone. That's a lot to have to replace, and this just adds one more name to that list of guys from 2014 who are no longer with us, that 2014 team that we thought was going to win it all. It's, it's another guy gone from that, and it's, it's hard to see them. It's hard to see much of that team. I don't, I don't even know what's left of that team from a legit standpoint. I mean, I know they had Tank, but I think that was just a drastically different year. That's Tank's rookie year, so... As far as major guys, I don't know really what's left. Tyrone Crawford, do we count that? Regardless, I digress. It's it's surprising, but the money saved and what they think, they must know something. That's all I keep coming back to. They must know something that we haven't really caught wind of yet because something's clearly off and something clearly, clearly made them think that this was the best decision because this is a team with a lot of cap room next year. So people asking, does this clear the way for Earl Thomas? Uh, this wasn't even an issue in the way of getting Earl Thomas, like at all. I, I really don't know what this would have to do with Earl. We weren't hurting for cap space anyway. So I, I don't think this is tied at all. 
Now, is Earl still possible? Yeah, I think Seattle's, you know, bolsting like they want. They're trying to push the ante and say, hey, give us the absolute top end pick that you're willing to because your offer sucks. Dallas wisely is not blinking right now, sticking to their guns. But we'll see. Sometimes you got to be a little bold, man. You look at what the Bears just did getting uh, Khalil Mack. That, that's a steal, especially when you're – everyone always looks at it and they say, oh, God, two first-round picks. Dude, When you especially when you look at a team like the Bears who haven't had a lot of strong drafting in that position. Now, granted, I like Roquan Smith, but they haven't had a lot of strong drafting in the first round in recent years anyway. For them, that's a no-brainer. For Dallas, Dallas has done much better in the first round in recent years, although the last two – I think Taco's going to be serviceable. He was at the back end of the first round. And LVE, he's got a high ceiling, but who the hell knows with his injuries and his stubborn groin injury now he's dealing with. But I don't know. I, I look at something like that and I see a potential missed opportunity. Not saying Dallas should have been in on Mac. I'm just saying that mindset. If you think that you're looking at something and that's that's the difference between you and winning it all, you gotta go you gotta make the moves, man. You gotta do it. So I, I don't know. I'll tell you one thing I'm interested in, though. I saw that the Raiders cut Martavis Bryant after trading for him last year. I would be very interested in adding Martavis Bryant to this receiving core. Very interested indeed. Especially here, because part of what he was so bent out of shape about was not getting featured more in the offense and not being allowed to get more reps. Here, I think he'll have an easier time doing that. He is the prototypical wide receiver that we would need for that spot, especially now. So... Very interested uh, in that regard. As as for the main topic of this video, very shocked regarding Dan Bailey, but we'll we'll keep you updated, man. We'll we'll do some video probably tomorrow. I'll try and do something impromptu with Law and maybe James if I can, maybe Ari, Ari Temkin as well, a Phantom and 105.3 The Fan. Just see if we can talk about this some more once we've had some more hindsight. But for now, that's my time. Hang tight, guys. I will bring you more information when I can. Just remember. Every legend was once a prospect. Salute.